Hi everybody, cheers. Welcome to part two of my women, women's prize fiction reading long list vlog thing. Either way, this is the second part in this little series maybe. There could potentially be a third, but the three books that I have left and have access to, I'm on hold for quite a while still. I'm not sure that I'm gonna be able to make a third part just because I don't know that I'm gonna get these books anytime soon. But it has been a couple of weeks actually since I've filmed anything for the series, but I have been reading. We're going to talk about the few that I've read and then we'll continue on with what's left, with what is left. First of all, grab yourself a drink. This is supposed to be an orange hot chocolate, so I've heard or seen that you can put some like juice and orange into a hot chocolate and make it chocolate orange, and I did that. I don't really taste it. It just tastes like hot chocolate. And that is A-OK -okay in my books. Let's start with, we'll start with the DNF. There's another DNF on this list. That is okay reading this objective. And there's just not enough time in this world, on this planet, in my life to be reading books that I'm not enjoying. So I DNF'd Enter Ghost by Isabella Hamad. Isabella Hamad. This book, I was giving a chance because it was on this long list and it was on a ton of people's predictions list. So there seemed to be quite a bit of hype behind it, but it was never a book that I would have picked up naturally on my own. It's following this woman who is an actress and she's going through a little bit of a hard time and she comes back. She goes to visit her sister in Tel Aviv, I think. And she's kind of recruited into the, putting on this Hamlet production. And the thing with this is it's very much written, I don't know, it was just not a very compelling story to me. I, I don't know if I didn't like the setup and the background of it being a Shakespearean play because I'll be honest, I don't really get the Shakespeare hype. <laughs> like, that's totally a me thing. I've tried, it, it's just, I don't like reading plays. And there are parts of this book that are written in play format. And you'll actually be in the middle of like a, an interesting conversation that all of a sudden it switches to that format. And I, I just didn't like the way it was written. I wasn't very drawn to the story. I wasn't very drawn to the character. So unfortunately this for me is a pass. I wouldn't be surprised if this continues on into the shortlist, but it's, it's just not a book for me. I, had, I did read Ordinary Human Feelings by Megan Nolan. And this was an interesting book because you're following this family who is believed to be responsible for the murder of a child. And the other perspective, you're getting per different perspectives from that family. But the other one, the outsider, is this journalist named Tom. And he just through circumstances happens to be there kind of when the crime is discovered. And so he takes it upon himself. He wants to be able to write the tell-all. He wants to be able to break the news. He wants to be the one that rises to fame as a journalist who discovers what's going on and what happened in this crime. And so he does a couple of sleazy things sort of in order to make himself indispensable to this family and so that he can put himself in a position where he can use that information for his own claim to fame. And I think that that part of it was really interesting. I think the family story itself was interesting. It's a short book, it's an easy read. It was kind of a grittier, coming of age family story, sort of. Like, you're definitely following a family through quite a period of time, but very brief moments because the chapters aren't that long and you're constantly switching through, switching perspectives. So it was a really easy book to read and I found the story easy to follow. I thought the crime portion of it was interesting but the crime portion was almost secondary to just the family dynamics that was going on and I did enjoy that so this was a good book. I would be surprised if it made the short list but definitely still a good read. And then we have Night Bloom. This has been by far the most readable book so far on this list. I really really enjoyed this. If you think family drama was going on in this book there is some family drama going on in this book. And so you're following two cousins, Akorfa. I always, Akorfa and Selassie. Selassie? 
the first part of the book you're following one cousin, the second part of the book you're following the other. And when they're young, they are inseparable. They're best friends, they do everything together. And then life circumstances happen and they move apart. Physically they move. One of the cousins moves into kind of a bigger city and the other one is left behind in, like she's, she's in okay circumstances, but not the best circumstances because of her immediate family. And there are things that happen that pushes them apart. And then there's this kind of really important moment in both of their lives that they're unaware of and how that really changes the trajectory of their lives and their relationship. And I thought it was really, really good. It's hard. There's a lot of uh, very much like family secrets and it's really about um, hiding secrets for your own image and your own purpose and keeping those secrets to the detriment of yourself and to the detriment of your relationships and your families. And I thought that that was a really interesting discussion. I think the characters were good. It's so funny, you you follow the two girls and you can see this story from both their perspectives. For me personally, at the end of the story, I definitely had the point of view that I most agreed with and the one that I thought, no, I kind of think you maybe you're, it, things might be skewed a little bit and not necessarily on her own, but just because of how things happened around her and the way they were raised, how it can really alter what is actually happening in front of you. And I thought that to be really interesting. So this was quite good. And I am very happy to have read it because I didn't hear about it at all until this long list was announced. And I think it's a, I thought it was a really good book. And so that leaves me to the final book I have physically in front of me. We're working our way through this thing. River East, River West by Albay Ray Lascure is the next one up. That is the one that I'm about to start today. We'll see how far I get into it. It's not the longest book in the world. It is, I'm trying not to like read anything. Just 339 pages. So it can take me a couple hours. I mean, it can take me more than a couple hours, but it shouldn't take too long. And I'm looking forward to what this one has to say. So this is an exploration of China and the American dream. And I think it has something to do with a girl, her mother is getting married and she feels betrayed by that or something like that. And I think you're bouncing back and forth between the stepdaughter and then the stepfather from previous, his previous life as a, as a younger, younger person. So I think that that is where this one is going. And I am definitely very curious about how this goes. Now, it is um, blurbed by two authors whose books I didn't like. <laughs> we will, we'll see how this one goes, but I'm hoping it goes well. Let us set up, do some reading, drink some hot chocolate, and work our way through this final book that I have in my possession for the Women's Prize. It should be a good time. Last clip of me reading was maybe three days ago and I am still only at page 183. That has nothing to say about this book. I'm actually really enjoying the book. Life is just kind of other things came up and my priorities had to shift. We are following Alva who is the stepdaughter and Lu Fang who is the stepfather and Alva's story takes place in 2007 and Lu Fang's main story takes place in 1985 i believe yeah and they are in shanghai i keep having to check because it's been a little bit since i picked it up shanghai and alva is really struggling with her identity as a chinese american girl living in china her chinese 
um, peers don't think that she's Chinese enough and she's about to start going to an American school and I imagine she's going to find that she's not American enough for the people going to that school. We will see how that plays out and then Lu Feng, he's living, I guess we're going to discover how it is that he got to be where he is because in his previous life there are some people in it that are very obviously not in his story anymore and trying to figure out how the, the Lu Feng from previous and the Elva and Lu Feng from now, how their stories connect. And it's it's work, it's going really well. I think that the backdrop of history, of political history is being done really well. It's quite, I wouldn't call it subtle, but it is not in your face necessarily because it, you are following a teenage girl and teenage girls kind of tend to very much are focused on themselves and, and this girl is. And then for Lu Feng, I think it's about He's trying to make himself content in his circumstances, but he's not really, and we're following that journey. I'm having a good time. I'm hoping when I sit down to read this now, I can get back into it, because sometimes when you're pulled out of a story, even if you're really enjoying it, and I haven't been able to pick it up for a little bit, it's hard to get back into it. And I would like to get back into it, because I would like to finish it. <laughs> Wish me luck. Here we go. But like I said, so far, very much enjoying this book, and I hope that that trajectory continues. Done Like Dinner. This book wrapped up, I think, really well. The story got kind of complex as it neared the end, and I think particularly the story of Lu Fang was absolutely fascinating. I think even Alva took a really good turn. Um, she went through a couple things that really caused her to have to think about what was going on around her in the world and have to be a little bit more cognizant of the world not just being about her and her feelings. And I, I thought the character development was done really, really well in this. I thought the writing was done really well. The end got dark and then it wrapped up really well. And I just, I just enjoyed it. I think that the characters were all complex and well-developed and they evolved through the book. I enjoyed it. I think the ending, like literally the last couple chapters was a little sentimental, but I think the whole, the way the whole story wrapped up wrapped up really well and you leave the book kind of wondering how things progress because of the changes that are made at the end and I'm kind of curious as to how where the characters are now and how they're doing and I think that's a really cool feeling to have at the end of the book. But there you have it. That is part two of this Women's Prize Fiction long list reading vlog. I'm sorry it wasn't nearly as vloggy as the other one. Life just kind of didn't allow me to do that, but all in all the reading was pretty decent. So River East, River West. Uh, what else did I read in this one? Um, Night Bloom, Ordinary Human Feelings, and I DNF'd Enter Ghost. I would say River East, River West is definitely near the top of my list. I really enjoyed Night Bloom as well. Yeah, I'm going to be curious now for the shortlist and what that entails. I don't know that I'm going to get, like I said, to any of the other books. But if I do, I will try to do like either really quick little vlogs or reviews on those books. But that is the Women's Prize. I would say for the most part, I have really, I've enjoyed most of the books. I'm not right now super compelled to think one deserves to win this prize. Like when I think about last year, Demon Copperhead I believe was the one that won last year, and I was over the moon about that book. I thought that book was brilliant. I thought it was one of the best books I've ever read. Ever read. Like I, I felt passionate about that book winning. I wanted it to win. I was so behind it. And so far on the list this, this year, I haven't felt those same, those same feelings and I don't know, maybe it's just not for me. I don't know how other people have been feeling. I have to start watching people's vlogs now because I uh, can now hear what people want to say about the books without it distorting how I feel about them. But 
like it's been fine, but nothing has been spectacular and prize worthy winning to me so far. But we shall see how this prize progresses. Thank you very, very much for joining me through this journey. And I will see everybody around. Bye.